Lately, I've been playing with this AI powered photo editor and image editor called Luminar Neo, and what it can do is pretty impressive. So I've got it open now, and it's really, it's focused at photographers, but I don't see why you couldn't use this for AI art, and we'll test that out a little bit later in the video. But in order to get started, I've got some images here, which you can already see. And if I want to add, it's going to add photos and I can add a single image or even just add a fol folder and it'll just reference that folder. And if I add images in, it'll actually update live, which is pretty handy. But there's a few new features that are actually a part of it. So there's Generate and Gen Swap. These are like kind of like your Stable Diffusion type tools, kind of like Generative Fill in Photoshop. I'll quickly touch on that. And, uh, and there's a bunch of extras up here. If I click on that, you can add on as extensions as well but there's also a marketplace where you can go and buy more extensions for this as well and then it's a pretty full-on program i'm going to open up this image here there's some people walking past a building and click generate and if i zoom in i'm going to hold down space and just move this up i've got some people here i pretty much don't want in this photo so essentially i've got to select so i can increase my brush size and i can select what i want just like this pretty rough and easy if I want to, I can click deselect, bring the brush size down and tidy it up a little bit also if I want to. It's pretty handy. But I want to make sure I select all the shadows or so select that shadow as well. And if I hover over the selection, I can click reset to get rid of it. But otherwise, if I want to erase, I just simply hit erase. I give it a minute or so as it's done locally on the computer. And you can see it's removed it pretty successfully. And if I'm not happy with it, I can always hit erase again. And now I've got a different result. I can undo, redo. I do like the second one, so I'm going to go save. And this is our image. And if I decide that I want to save that image, I right click, go to export. It gives me a few options here, like where I want to save it. And I just simply set it up like a JPEG, whatever resolution I want, hit export. And it will export that image as a full resolution image. So now we have the image here. If I zoom in, can see the level of detail and quality that's in that image and it's done a pretty good job I'm gonna head back over here to images to use I've got that one open for some reason and open up this land room photo here and click gen swap and this is a lot like generative fill in the sense that if I want to add something I can so I can start with something pretty basic like maybe I just highlight that there and I can add a prompt down the bottom here, such as a cup of water, hit swap. And the generative, generative area is a little over 1500 by 1500 pixels that you can use. So there is still limitations to resolution, but yeah, it's still pretty good and a bit better than what I think Photoshop has at the moment. So we have a cup there. I'm gonna change that now to a glass of water because I don't want a cup, I want a glass. Click swap again. So now I have a glass of water in place. And you can see how well it's blended that in. But I can also do something different. I'm going to reset the selection, draw here. Now I'll type in cat having a sleep, hit swap. Now there's a pretty big cat having a sleep on that chair. And again, I can just actually, rem I can swap something out. So I've highlighted this here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, a bit of vintage lamp. And because I didn't reset my selection, it's kind of added something in where the cat is. So I'm going to click undo reset my selection and it's popped a, a vintage style lamp in that image so it's kind of like having photoshop a generative fill uh but also a whole bunch of other features you don't have in photoshop but not as complicated it's pretty handy i'm going to save that image and here's our result editing the photos is also a really really powerful feature if i go back to images to use and open up this image of a field here and i'm going to go to edit there's a whole bunch of things i can do pretty easily first of all i'm going to go to sky and this is one of the things that skylum was first known for before they released luminar neo i click on sky and i can choose different skies to pop in there so i click on this and it'll actually add the sky in there i can reposition it Come back up, I'm gonna choose something different. Dramatic sunsets. Choose something like this. I'm gonna reposition it again so we get a bit more of that sunset in there. And what we can do is actually affect the scene. So I come down here to scene relighting and I can relight that scene so it matches. You see how it's really green when I turn it off? and it kind of matches the sky a bit better when I turn it up. 
I'm going to turn that saturation up. If there were humans in the scene, it also relights the humans. If there were reflections, it would relight those reflections. So with that turned on, I can go back to my dramatic sunset, choose a starry night, like this, and you see it's changed the lighting of that again. There's so many things I can actually defocus the sky because it's a little bit soft. Maybe I want to defocus that sky a little bit. Add some atmospheric haze. Some warmth. I can make all these little adjustments to the image to try and get it looking the way I want to. Now check out how that looks compared to the original. It's used AI to replace the sky. And if you zoom right in on the trees, you can see how precisely it's blended it into the background. It's done a really impressive job. So I'm going to open this image now and go to edit. So I'm going to show you some features. So this is a pretty sharp image, but I can actually make adjustments to the face. I've got it edited here. I've got my tools on the right. If I scroll down, there's a face AI. I click on that. And I've got all these sliders I can play with for the face. I can add face light. So she's a little bit glowing, not really the best, but adding a bit of light to the face. She already has a pretty slim face, but I can slim that face down if I want to, which I'm going to leave. With the eyes, I can change them to a different color. So there's green, honey, owl. So I can change the color of the eyes, which is incredible. And then I can actually take the iris visibility and crank that up a bit, bring it down. So I can really bring out that color a bit more and then give it a little flare that really lightens it up. And again, if I hit the eye, you can see the difference here. But I'm gonna go back to original so we can see the difference between the original eyes and what we've done. That flare will crank that right up, bring that visibility down. I can enlarge the eyes and go anime style, make them huge, which looks a bit ridiculous. <laughs> but um, I can do the same with eye whitening, is uh, make the eyes quite white, which looks a little bit alien as well. But if you've got images which do need a little bit of it, a little bit of a touch up can be good. That flare's a little insane, we'll bring it down a bit. So again, before, after, there's an eye enhancer. I crank that right up to full so you can see how it brings out those eyes. So you've got the ability to change certain parts. So we're just playing with the eyes here. If you've got red eyes, you can bring that down. If you've got sort of dark circles under the eyes, there's a dark circles removal. So if you look at this right eye over here, before, after, we've removed the darkness from underneath that eye so it looks a bit more skin tone. And if these eyebrows weren't very dark, you could darken up the eyebrows. So some pretty cool features there. And then of course, if you're looking to edit photos, you've got a face AI with mouth. So you can even have the lip saturation up, which looks a little bit crazy again. Lip redness, so you can get like an almost lipstick pink look. You can darken it up, lighten it up. You can whiten the teeth. And again, you can put them side by side and really see the difference. But if we zoom in and look at the detail, you can see just how incredibly sharp everything is and how it's really brought those eyes and face to life just with a few of those options. And there's actually a whole bunch more we could cover, but I just don't want the video to go for hours. However, I also want to touch on the upscaler over here. I'm going to add in an image from Mid Journey. So I'm going to go add image. Now I've actually enlarged this image in the past with other programs. So I'm going to open this cat image here and I'll go back to my catalog. So this is a single image edit. So I'm going to click on this cat image and go to upscale. Drag the photo in there. I want to 6X that image and hit upscale. So now it's finished. A little folder has popped up here called upscale. So I'm going to open this image and it's been upscaled 6x so it's going to be about 6,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels. I'm going to zoom in and you can see it's actually done a pretty good job. I compare to our original and you can see a big difference in just how pixelated it is on the left with the original and how sharp it is on the right with the uh, upscale. But I thought I'd try something else and throw my Topaz gigapixel upscale in the ring to compare those two and you can see the difference here. The topaz on the right is, it's not quite as sharp, but it is, I think, a better quality upscale overall. And on top of that, I've also got a photo of me, which is 800 by 800 pixels of upscale that, so we can see what the difference is also just with a photo as opposed to AI art.
And it's, pro it's good for the AI art, but for the photo, I think it's blurred my skin a little too much. I've got this other image open in order to show you a few more cool tools that you can use to work on these photos. If I head to Skin AI, I can do Skin Defects Removal and it will remove certain defects on the face. So hold this down. You can see we've got some mole here, mole there, another mole here. It'll actually remove those automatically. And we can experiment with shine removal a little bit to soften up the face. It doesn't do a great job in this image, but that's pretty cool. But the main thing I want to touch on was studio light. If I click on studio light, I can actually add lights to the image. If I take this light here, she's got highly lit on the left, more of a shadow on the right. If I move this light to the right side, I'm gonna zoom out a little, I can brighten this light up and move it around and it will sort of attempt to relight the subject. And it does try its best to use three, uh, like the three dimension, 3D dimension of the image. I can change the depth. So it looks like it's being lit from above. Move to the side and I can play with some settings. I can bring that down a little bit to really focus on that side and change the smoothness. So you can see how it kind of has a gel-like effect. And if I move it back, it's a little less full on. And I can just kind of add lighting sources to the image. I can even change the color. You notice here with the saturation up, I can change the color to a blue color, bring that saturation back down and just tone that down a little bit. And I've sort of lit that side of the face a little bit. Can move it in front as well and really light that left side because we've got competing light sources it does look a little unnatural there but i can also move and relight some areas here as well what's really cool about it is i can add more than one source i'm going to make this light here i'm going to make it red because you can make like a red light source from there so she's kind of got a bit of a red light coming from the right side and i can add another light and this time I can make it say a green light and you see the color here. I can move that green light off to this side, bring that amount up and start to light from one side as well. I can bring that depth down, still play with that amount a little bit. But overall, we've been able to add some different light sources. I just accidentally added a light source. So I've gone into edits here to continue from there and I can pump that up, move it around. But here's another cool thing is I'll take this red light, go to light customization. And I can give it textures such as shutters. So I can actually add like shutters as if there's a red light coming from some blinds. I can still crank it up, make it nice and bright. And notice if I do crank that up, how it contours, contours with the face and you see where it disappears. It actually does use some AI to determine where that light would land. And the scale, as I said, I can change that scale. I can change it to dots or strips and I can try other, so this palm leaf, all these other different effects I can add to the image. So vintage windows, bring that scale, bring that amount down a bit. And we can change the color again by adjusting the hue bring the saturation down in order to take some of the color out. So you can actually relight your images using studio lighting and it's actually pretty cool. Another cool thing when editing your images is you'll notice on the left we have layers. So I can actually add and subtract layers from this. I can go to the plus sign and find uh, an overlay or something to pop over the top of this image. I then choose something like this and I can resize it. I can add more if I want to. I can even go to plus and add my own image. And you can see it, it shows up as semi-transparent above the other two layers. I could bring it to full opacity, drag it underneath, and I'm gonna resize it behind this image because what I'm gonna do is click on the layer with the person in it, go over to my layer properties where it says masking, and I can go down to background removal. And when I click that, I simply give it a minute to go through the process. And then you can see the main object, which is the person, is actually highlighted in red. That's to show what it's going to leave behind. And I can turn on or off various areas of the image, but it does a really good job with cutting out people in the foreground. So when I've picked what I want in red that I want to keep, I come down and I press the remove button and it will actually cut that out and remove the background.
And now that I have those different layered sections, I can go to the background, change the sky if I want to, so I get something that looks a little more interesting. You notice the reflection in the, in the water is a bit better. We make our adjustments so that it blends in. I'm also going to remove these overlays and just adjust the color of the person in the photo so it looks a little bit more natural. I can then export, review my results, which I think are pretty decent. I mean, it's, it's not perfect. It's a very quick job, but it shows you just how much you actually have at your fingertips using Luminar Neo to edit and lay different layers of your photo together. Now, among these editing tools, you have a whole bunch of color adjustments, light adjustments, and even detail adjustments. If you look at the screen now, I'm going through a bunch of them at speed. You can basically go through and black and white images and control which colors are different sort of darknesses in that image. You can add and control the details of the image and adjust things like vignettes and really have a lot of fun with taking control of your image. There's so many features and I just can't touch on them all in depth. But uh, if you go through and have an explore, you'll see you can basically dramatize images and bring out a ton of detail. And it's just a matter of finding the, op the option you're looking for, sliding it around and having a play with it. And of course you can reset by hitting the little arrow button above each module and go back to where you started. And on top of that, if you choose an image, you can actually click on that, head up to presets, and you can actually explore a bunch of different presets that have been made, different layer effects, different color grades, and you can actually then choose which one you like, and you can even save your own presets pretty easily. So you don't actually have to go through and do all the hands-on editing. There's a bunch of presets you can use straight away to get results pretty quickly with Luminar Neo. Now that was a lot to go through, but it's an endless tool to explore. So if there's anything that you wanna see me cover in future videos covering Lum Luminar Neo, I'm gonna try and focus on a few key areas in the future and go a little bit deeper. But otherwise, leave a comment below with your thoughts or anything you'd like to see. And hopefully we can get a bit of time aside and work on really delving deep into those features. It's a really powerful program and I highly recommend checking out. There's a link in the description below. It is a premium software, so you do have to pay for it. However, there is actually a lifetime purchase. So you can go down, choose a lifetime purchase and never have to pay a cent again. I know that really appeals to a lot of you guys, but otherwise, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. And once again, anything you want to see in Luminar Neo, pop in the comments below. See you next time.